Laws of Attraction, Chapter 1, Jury of Your Peers. You're in court, nearing a close of your latest case, a property dispute between your client and the plaintiff. You sit next to your client at the defendant's table, listening as the plaintiff's attorney finishes his closing statement. Members of the jury, the defendant placed a fence on my client's property, which deprived his garden of vital sun. My client's reputation lives or dies on the state fair prize with the largest gold. That fence caused more damage than you can imagine. Your client leans in to whisper to you, face lined with worry. Can he really say all that? The deed says it's my property, and I just wanted to keep my son safe while he played. Your blood boils to see him manipulating the facts so boldly you need to stand up for your client. Body type. One or two. I'll go with a two. Put your best face forward in court. Face one, two, three, four, one it is. Next, let's pick a hairstyle. <laughs> Straight blonde, fade away, red waves, slicked back. Mm. No, doesn't look right. Also, yeah, the eyebrows don't even go with it. Moving on. Precedent setting, agreed? Ugh. I rest my case. Quinn. Michaels. Yeah, that's right. We'll just go by default. He has no evidence for any of this. He's trying to trick the jury. I have to reassure my client. Don't worry, I know this sounds damning, but they're just grasping at straws. I don't know. The jury seems convinced. Maybe for now, but we get to have the last word. I am sure many of you have had your freedoms good deal before, and I'm sure many of you are also small business owners. The lifeblood of America, might I add. If you care about small business, about freedom, you might find in favor of my client. And with that, the attorney returns to the plaintiff's table, throwing a maddening smirk your way. The client, sh his client, shakes his hand heartedly. The defendant has had an opportunity for a, a rebuttal. You know, stand and clear your throat, moving to the center of the floor to face the jury. I'm sure many of you have found that very persuasive. That doesn't change the facts. So, let me clear something up. Throughout the book, the choices you make will impact the sort of attorney you become. Choose wisely. Jurors, you have to remember... Mm, my client's rights? Mm, the law. My client asked her neighbor to repair this fence years ago. She has records of every request, and the new fence follows the original line. The law on this issue is clear. At the plaintiff's table, you hear the attorney's stage whisper to his client. Nothing to worry about. Our evidence showed the fence was built on your property. The client's property, huh? If that's how you want to play it, let's play. As you know, we dispute the plaintiff's unproven claim of the position of the property line, but we're willing to accept his assertion. If he's willing to repay my client for uh, back maintenance on the 11 mature trees she always believed to be solely part of her property. Wait, are you saying this falls under tree law? What's tree law? I don't have figures in front of me, but the annual tree maintenance in the area runs about $400 per tree per an annum, and she's lived at the property for 18 years, so conservatively we're talking at least $75,000. 70? What the hell is he talking about, Jim? Tree law. It's an incredibly complex field of legal theory, think. String theory crossed with ficus. 
Of course, that uh, doesn't take into account the issues of root growth on a property, and last year a branch from that, uh, from what we know uh, to be the plaintiff's tree, fell on her roof, causing an upwards of $20,000 in damages. Why didn't you mention the trees? You do not want to mess around with tree law! The opposing attorney starts conferring rapidly with his client, and then turns to the bench. Your Honor, my client has a request. Please stand up so the court can hear you, Mr. Martinetti. I want to withdraw my suit about the property line. As long as she won't uh, come after me with uh, all about the tree law, I'm sure we can work something out. The jury is dismissed, the counsel, if... Uh, Tree law is coming into play here. There may be grounds to settle additional damages on the defendant. Is she saying that your jerk neighbor might actually owe you money? Sounds like it to me. What the? Why the hell would I? For God's sakes, Frank, shut your mouth before you do any more damage. The plaintiff's attorney leads a sputtering lion away. You're packing up your papers and about to head out when you stop by an unfamiliar woman. Excuse me, Quinn Michaels, is that right? Ah, uh, that's me, and you are. I'm Sally McGraw of McGraw Burn. You may have heard of me. She hands you a business card, the card stock heavy in your hand. McGraw Burn? That's one of the most respected firms in New York City. But how did she even hear about a small town lawyer like me? I should be honest. Uh, of course I've heard of you. McGraw Burn is probably the premier firm in New York City. I'd say definitely the premier firm, but I suppose that's just quibbling. But you were arguing before the Supreme Court yesterday morning. What could you possibly want with me? I always go after the best, and you, Quinn, I think you're one of the best. I was impressed today. Some attorneys write off small-town disputes like this, but I saw some highly innovative legal strategy. McGraw-Byrne needs lawyers like you. Lawyers who know the law inside and out, and know how to use it to their client's advantage. Um, what are you saying? I'm saying there's an office at McGraw-Byrne with your name on the door. So is this a job offer? I'm flattered, but I... I'm not here to flatter you any more than I already have, Mr. Michaels. I'm here to let you know that we're serious, which I believe this will. A plane ticket to New York City. But this ticket has my name on it. Precisely. Luca, can you please walk Mr. Michaels through this the starting compensation, bonus structure, and relocation package? A neat young man carrying a stack of files approaches. He hands you an envelope. Of course, Miss McGraw. So lovely talking with you, Mr. Michaels. Glad to have you aboard. Teddy McGraw shakes your hand goodbye and walks away. The clockwork precise stick of her heels growing more distant with each step. Uh, wait, but what if I say no? Teddy looks back, her face wrinkling into amusement. You won't. Officially, business hours start at 9.30 a.m., but you'll probably want to be early on your first day. See you Monday. You wake up Monday morning in a tiny New York hotel room. The windows look out over a crowded street. The sound of taxis honking filters in. Wow, back at home I wouldn't hear anything but birds at this hour. New York's already get, already up and going. I'd take the birds. I'm going to be working at the city's best law firm. I definitely want to make a good impression. Making the first, or the right first impression will not only make you feel confident, but will give you a career boost. <sniffs> I'm sorry, but no. This suit, oh god, help me. You turn around in front of the mirror, checking yourself out from every angle. I already feel ready for anything. Make your way to McGraw Burns Midtown Offices, situated on the 42nd through 45th floors of a towering luxury skyscraper in the heart of the city. Hello, and welcome to McGraw Burn. May how may I assist you? Oh, hi, I'm Quinn Michaels. I'm a new hire. Oh, I'll let them know you're here. Please have a seat. 
you take a seat near the window, and from this high up, you can see over the skyscrapers of Manhattan, all the way to the blue-gray water of the Hudson River. With this view, how does anyone get any work done here? An elevator dings behind you. You turn around to see a young man approaching. He's smiling warmly. You must be Mr. Michaels. Welcome to McGrawburn. I'm Ryan Cor Cortazar. Nice to meet you, Ryan. Are you one of the uh, partners here? I wish. I am still a lowly paralegal. But I've got to say, dressed like that, I definitely mistake you uh, for one. I figured a uh, move to New York deserved a, a little style upgrade. Smart move. The partners here like to project a professional image. So, how nervous should I be? I mean, do you want me to lie to you, or...? Uh, that's not encouraging. Uh, you'll get used to it. Besides, they'd never have hired you if you weren't the best of the best. On that note, should we get started? He starts leading you down the hallway you follow, trying to take it all in. Uh, sounds like you're the, uh, the good guy to know. You must be pretty in loop if they trust you to do the employee orientation. Oh, definitely. They trust me with all the best job, actually. Coffee runs, photocopying, basic ethics explanations. Ah, uh, if they trust you with the coffee, you must be pretty important. This is a law firm, after all. Listen, I don't trust anybody with my coffee. Ah, uh, the day I picked up my first half-calf oat milk extra hot latte, I knew I'd rather, really rather uh, arrived. Oat milk. Okay. Ryan leads you to one of the many elevators. A man is already standing inside, a stack of briefs in his arms. You turn uh, to Ryan as the door closes. So, am I the only uh, yokel at this place, or uh, just the most recent one? Ryan makes a slashing motion across his throat, and you take the hint. A few lo floors later, the man steps off, and Ryan exhales forcefully. Uh, word of the wise, don't say stuff like that around uh, about yourself, where uh, someone else can hear you. What? Why? I am from a small town, and I've never tried cases like this before. I'll play it uh, the way you want, but from everything I've seen at this place, self-deprecation isn't going to win you any points, or any cases. I'll keep that in mind. The elevator dings, and Ryan escorts you off. I would be totally lost in here without you. This place is like a maze. I gotta keep the staff hungry, literally. Make it too easy to find the break room, and you all uh, will take all kinds of breaks. On your way down one last corridor, you pass a stunning office. The double doors flung open so that you can see inside. A man stands at the window. Who's inside? Him. 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 Actually, him. I, why couldn't I look like this? Uh, who's that? Gabe Reese, one of the junior partners, but we don't want to disturb him. You linger just outside the door, drawn in by the incredible views and a hint of something else. Seeming to sense you there, the man turns. Mm, love interest number one, I'm assuming. His eyes light on Ryan, and he grins. Ryan, come in. They've been hiding from me. Following hard, Ryan steps into the office and you follow just behind. What? Uh, of course not. I, I just had a lot to do this morning. Oh, and was pay Gabe back for getting completely rooted, routed at poker last night on your long list of tasks. Listen about that. I just need to get some cash together. Tell you what, you finished my discovery on the um, Martison case. We'll call it even this time. And this would be, uh... This guy snaps over you, and you find yourself a little taken aback by the intensity in his eyes. Uh, oh, um, I'm, I'm Quinn. Uh, Quinn Michaels. Ryan was showing me to my office. Hmm, that can wait. You're exactly the person I want right now. Well, this is fast, but okay. Can we get lunch first, though? The words hang in the air between you crackling with possibility. I'm uh, happy to help any way that I can. I bet you are. He smiles slyly in a way that hints at a 
all kinds of hidden depths and then sucks in a sharp breath. Right, follow me, Michaels. Try to look like you know what you're doing. And with that, he strides off down the hall, leaving Ryan behind you. Unsure what else to do, you follow after him. Ryan, I still don't know where my office is! By the way, I like the outfit. I like yours better than mine. He turns to glance over you quickly. Dressing in a way like that makes people think or look twice is always the right play, especially when you're playing in the big leagues. Oh, uh, so I pass for a big leagues player in this? Glances over his shoulder once more, eyes meeting yours, and a corner of his mouth quirks up. I'd say so, yeah. Let's hope I'm not the only one who thinks that, though. Um, about that. So, um, where are we going? Would it make any difference if you knew? Um, I suppose not. For now, just try to follow my lead. You can manage that, can't you? Glances over his shoulder and your breath catches at the intensity of a stare. Suddenly the air in the hallway feels charged. Um, yeah, I can manage. Hmm, I knew I liked this, or you. This shouldn't take long. He pushes open the doors of the hallway, leading you into a small conference room where a woman is already seated at the table. Ah, uh, Mary, always a pleasure. I'm assuming you're here to accept my client's counteroffer on the property over at Fifth and Lex. I'm here to check whether you'll, uh, you're well, Gabe. The Brookwings Group isn't going to used to paying five times the market rate for a townhouse. We booked them was falling apart. Come on, Mary. Two at most. Besides, I'm holding all the cards here. If my client doesn't sell, your new condo complex is dead in the water. That might be true, Gabe, but they'll never agree to that price. Frankly, I don't even know how you're getting that number. That's what Mr. Michaels is here to help explain. I am? Mm, of course. Mary Quinn is one of the city's foremost experts on tree lawn. You may have heard about his recent win, Rodriguez vs. Uh, Martiniti. I must have missed that case. Ah, well, it's hard to keep up with all the press in it these days. Here, I'll let him explain. <clears throat> let me, but I'm not a real tree law expert. This is the first time I'm used to win a case. He turns to you an expected look on his face, and you realize it doesn't matter. Right now, it's do or die. Right, uh, the thing is, the trees on the property are worth, um... On his back, Gabe opens both hands, spreading his fingers wide. They're worth at least, um... I don't fucking know. A million dollars, I don't know. Ten... One for each million? I don't know, ten million. Gabe thinks, uh, gives you the tiniest tick on his, of his chin. Looks like I read it out right. I would explain the figure in your counter, but I still don't see why the trees are worth that much. It's because of their age, primarily. The specifics of the law can get a bit inside baseball, but especially in a city like New York, trees that old are hard to put a price on. So I'm sure you understand why we have to include their value in the counter, which is, uh, I think you'll see now is more than fair. She glances over the documents in front of her again, and then sighs, nodding. I suppose I can see it, and obviously I expected you to have something to back it up, which is why I prepared my client for an amount near this. Mm, Mary, we both know we're gonna say yes, so let's just cut the foreplay, hmm? The attorney's mouth twitch or twists into a grin and smile. Fine, consider it done. Are you at least going to buy a girl a dinner? Mm, let's save that for next time we dance, hmm? Laughing, the rival attorney pack up their things and makes her way out of the office. Gabe turns to you. So, how are you feeling? I'm honestly not sure. I didn't really expect to get thrown into the deep end so fast. Well, you should start expecting it. That's the way things work here. But you have nothing to worry about. You read the room perfectly, and that's the exact figure I wanted to throw at Mary. Hmm, guess I'm good at picking your signals. Also, it was more a realistic amount. But I still don't understand why you brought me into this negotiation at all. Because I needed a bluff. She couldn't call to justify her counteroffer, and frankly, no one knows really how much uh, about the tree law. If she looks up the case, she'll see it hinged on the value of trees. All in all, you were the perfect cover. And I got to see how you work under pressure. 
So two birds, one tree branch? Ah, something like that, yes. He looks you over, lips curling into what you're realizing is a characteristically sly smile. You just might have a future here, Michaels. At least if you have the right people in your corner. Uh, like you. You saw my office, didn't you? That's a junior partner. Thanks to help, um, to your help with that little negotiation, my schedule just cleared up through lunch. I'd be happy to bring you all up all in the speed how this place works, consider it a thank you for saving me a lot of annoying back and forth just now. Join Gabe to learn about how to succeed at McGraw and get to know the firm's most successful junior partner. Fine, but by the way, stay to the end of this video for a new message. Um, after all, who better to learn the ropes from clearly you're doing something right around here. Several dozen things right, as it seems a smart choice though. Soon, you and Gabe are walking down the New York streets. There's a busker playing the Star Trek theme on a flute just outside the building. Gabe tosses a $20 bill in the man's in instrument case. I, too, would do that. You just get me, Jake. <laughs> the busker bows his head and plays a little trill and thanks. Soon, you're at the coffee shop. Gabe opens the door and gestures for you to enter. After you... Gabe walks up to the counter where the barista lights up to see him. Hey, Gabe, good to see you again. Your usual? What can I see, Olivia? I'm extremely predictable. Nothing wrong with that. Double shot on ice coming right up. Really? On ice? Michaels, what are you drinking? Mmm. I like a little flavor with my day, but I also like something straw strong. If I go to a coffee shop, I'm typically a cool slash frappuccino person. I make the hot coffee because no one else can even come close to what I make. Yes, Starbucks, that's a jab right at your face. You can never come close to me. Caramel macchiato, let's go. Dear Lord, I knew Sadie was looking for some up-and-comers, but I didn't know they were letting actual children practice law these days. I will smack the shit out of you. I got plenty of bitterness on the job, thank you very much. Whatever floats your boat, as long as you don't expect to convert me, that is. Soon the barista delivers your drinks. Order up! Mm, thank you, Olivia. And this is for uh, your books at NYU. Not the punk band, okay? He drops a five in her tip jar, and she grins even wider, giving him a little mock salute. You file away uh, everything you learn about everybody, don't you? Knowing people is half the job, now follow me. Where are we going? I'm letting you in on McGraw, Burns, Best Cap Secret, which, as it happens, isn't the quality of their br break room coffee. And with that, he pushes through the door and you hurry after him. Back into the firm skyscraper into a different elevator bank. Emerge on a rooftop with the views over the entire city. Air this high up is a bit brisk. Clusters of furniture and bistro lights give it a cozy feel. Also the dog barking. <laughs> <laughs> wow, it's amazing up here. I can't believe we have it all to ourselves. That's by design. Sadie secured exclusive rooftop access by the, for the firm. And uh, only partners' key cards can bring you here. So, uh, you're just tempting me with what I can't have. He raises an eyebrow, holding your gaze a moment too long. I prefer to think of it as a... Motivating you. Hmm. To make partner fast? Or make fast friends with the right partner? I'm surprised you want lowly associates as friends. You must have plenty. Especially if you wield the almighty power of rooftop access. Dozens. But I always like spending time with interesting people, and any senior associate who can keep up with me that quickly is definitely worth my attention. How are you feeling about all this so far, by the way? McGraw Burn moving to the big city. Honestly, it's a little overwhelming. My last firm was, uh, had a good reputation, but we were, uh, big fish in a small pond. Now the pond is... an ocean. Something like that. Unlike you, though, I'm uh, not sure whether or not I was born a shark. Gabe takes you in as he sips his drink, then leans forward, face serious. 
a little advice. Don't undersell yourself to anyone. They might not have done as much research as I have, so they uh, might be foolish enough to take you at your word. I'll keep that in mind. And for what it's worth, I wasn't born a shark. I grew into it, just like I'm sure you will. Oh, haven't you been at McGrawburn for years now? Several years, but uh, not an entire career. I started out as a New York City public defender. You were a public defender? That's impressive. That's a tough job. The pay is uh, nowhere near what you can make at a firm. I'm, um, I'm always so impressed by the people who do it. His eyes drift to the city views below, and for a minute, he seems lost in thought. I just wish I could have done more good while I was there. Nobody wins every case. Gabe's eyes snap back to yours, his amused smirk back in place. Especially not public defenders. Eh, how long were you uh, in the job? He sighs and looks down at his hands. Not long enough, I suppose. It can wear you down over time. Yeah, tell me about it. How so? If you don't mind my asking. Just the relentlessness of it all. You wouldn't believe how many people are out there that, uh, uh, being ground up by the gears of the justice system. I was starting to burn out hard when Sadie found me. Luckily, she was able to convince me I could do more good with a little more power. And she, uh, offered me a lot more power. That's really interesting. Mm, do you think she was right? About the power? Absolutely. And were you able to do much more good? with it, as you thought. Gabe looks out over the city. Yes and no. I can tell you that I still have a hell of a lot of cases that uh, would end up in public defender's desk otherwise. Uh, oh, um, how do you manage that? A few big wins can underwrite uh, a, a whole lot of uh, pro bono defenses. Uh, so, she was right then. He forces a small back onto his face. Still, you can see that it doesn't quite reach his eyes. She wasn't wrong. Sadie's almost never wrong, but everything has trade-offs. I'm not gonna lie, I'm kind of intimidated by her. See? I knew you had good instincts. That's not really reassuring. I'm not gonna pretend that Sadie's secretly a softy. You don't uh, make it to where she is in the business without being tough. But she's fair, and I'm not sure anyone knows what makes her tick exactly. But I'm confident you'll be able to impress her. Really? Is that the best tip you've got for the newbie? He laughs, setting down his drink to consider. Okay, here's one. She doesn't do rhetorical questions. If she asks a question, expect an answer. Or she expects one. I think it's part of her thought process. So basically, she's straight filter forward and not filtered. So, always speak up if she's asking those questions. Ideally, contribute something brilliant and insightful, but if that's uh, not possible, at least say something. Oh, and always compliment her jewelry. Shouldn't I focus on her legal thinking? You need to learn to read people better, Michael. Sadie has an entire firm ready to fawn over her brilliance. I promise you, she'd rather have at least a few of them compliment her style. I'm betting. You've got tons more advice. Maybe, but I can't give away all my secrets. He leans infinitesimally closer, eyelids lowering in a way that only seems to intensify his gaze. Just know I am very good to my friends. So you're saying I should stay on your good side. For a moment, he holds your gaze with his, the air between you seems to crackle, and everything seems to crackle in these books. Then he leans back, smiling genuinely in the moment, seemingly to evaporate into thin air. Good advice for anyone I just ask the lawyers I go up against in court. Don't worry too much about the job, though. Sadie only hires the best. All you have to do is prove her right. Of course. How simple. And with that, he rises. On that note, it's probably time to head back. Uh, thanks for all this. It's uh, always nice to get a lay of the land when you're starting a new job. Frankly, considering everything Sadie's got planned for her new clutch, I'd uh, feel remiss if I hadn't offered. Wait. Her new what? Gabe sniffs at a small laugh. I wouldn't dare steal Sadie's thunder. She'll tell you soon enough. Just keep what I said uh, in mind and you'll do fine. The two of you head back to the office, your mind worrying about the information you've learned.
Later that day, you're settling in the office as you're arranging a few of your books on the shelf. There's a knock on your door, and you look up. Quinn, there you are. How are you settling in? So far, so good. Everyone's been incredibly helpful. Sometimes you'll be able to learn or use the information you learned to improve your standing at the firm. And before, nice necklace. If you've previously uncovered information, important information, or if your choices contains an important clue, the smartest choice will be marked with a... God damn it, really? What did I just say? We don't need our hands held, and I swear to God, they think like we're 12 year olds. Maybe even six year olds. We need connect the dot and crayons. Imagine a memory that's longer than 12 seconds. By the way, I love your necklace. Really makes a statement. Hmm. Her expression softens she raises a hand to her neck. I certainly thought so. I always appreciate an associate with an eye for style. Looks like that coffee with Gabe is already paying off. Sadie clearly liked the compliment. I love the outfit, by the way. That the firm like this appearances matter. But clearly, I don't need to tell you that. I just want to do McGraw burn proud. Your instincts are dead on. I'm the lending you my assistant as soon as he hammers out the negotiation with the genetic you need an apartment oh i mean i could start looking after work i won't have you distracted that way luca have you found anything yet a young woman passes by hearing sadie's annoyance and steps into the room phone in hand a look of supreme confidence on her delicate features hmm pretty no worries, Sadie. I found something. You're always a lifesaver, Aislinn. You two sort that, and uh, we'll talk about your briefs in an hour. Aislinn flashes a thumbs up, still tapping on her phone with her other hand as Sadie turns and strides out of the room, her assistant trailing behind. So, um... Are you, um... Yeah, let's just hit it off with seeing anyone. Yeah, no. Um, another one of Sadie's assistants? Honestly, I think we're all fundamentally Sadie's assistants. But as far as my actual title, I'm senior associate. Oh, wait. You're a senior associate? Then why are you wasting your time looking up apartments for me? Because Sadie thinks it's the most important thing that needs to be done at the moment. Which means it's worth all of our time. I was just lucky enough to be walking by when she needed something easy. Well, I suppose she does sign the paychecks. I'm Quinn, by the way. Also a senior uh, associate, as it happens. I'm not sure that was totally clear. Eastland Tanaka, excited to be working with you. And in the interest of getting back to work, this listing seems like the best option based on price and proximity. Eastland shows you the listing on her phone. Ah, yes, that's what I want to do. I want to look out the window at trash. <laughs> oh, let me guess. This is the free-to-play version. Uh, wait. It cost how much for a one-bedroom? It's actually pretty cheap, all things considered. Although it is a garden-level apartment, you wouldn't get much light. Hey, it's fine with me. Or a chance to cook. Is that really supposed to be the kitchen? But I guess if that's the only option... I suppose I can send a quick text to my cousin, Kiji. He's a realtor. He always has a miracle place in his back pocket. Really? I know you big. That works uh, out, since I'd be cashing in a favor with him. This is your chance to secure a much nicer apartment, which you'll get to keep for the entire series. Take a peek at what you'll be upgrading to. Okay, that's way too goddamn bright. Seriously. Oh my god. Put some blinds up. Also, the chandeliers. Eh. Everything else is fine. What do we... Oh, that's another apartment. Okay, that one I would take. All oh, this does is show off the bathroom. Or is this the whole entire apartment? Upgrade your apartment. Okay, fine. I mean, as long as it's not too much trouble. None whatsoever. Though I might just call in the IOU someday. Let me uh, just call Keji. A few seconds later, she hands you the phone. This is Keji. 
Ash uh, says you're looking for a nicer place. Ah, uh, that's right. Something close to the office, ideally. We're in luck. I have a stunning one-bedroom overlooking the park that just came on the market. I can messenger the papers over to you if you can commit to it. I'm sending pictures now. You pull uh, the phone away from your ear to look at the p pictures coming through. Each one more stunning than the last. This place is incredible, but can I really afford it? You're an associate with one of the biggest law firms in New York. Yes, yes, you can afford it. Did Luca not go over the compensation package yet? Um, good point. I'll take it, Kedji. Ah, fantastic. Wonderful doing business with you. You hang up the phone and hand it back to Aislinn, head still spinning a bit. Yeah, you get a place, you don't have to pay for it, your job pays for it for you, you know, L. Uh, do things always move that fast in New York? In real estate, absolutely. And even faster at McGrawburn. Is there anything else you need, or...? No, no, I can manage, but thank you. That place is incredible. You're definitely earned the IOU. My pleasure. If Sadie's taught me anything, it's uh, that it's always good to have your colleagues and your dad. Anyway, nice to meet you, Quinn. I hope I'll be seeing more of you soon. And with that, Hazelyn turns and strides out the door. Fingers already flying over her keyboard again. I hate texting on a phone, seriously. You finally finish setting up your accounts, passwords, and logins when there's a knock at your door. Uh, uh, hey, you all set up? Um, just about. Thanks for showing me where my office is, you prick! Did Aislinn tell you about the apartment she found me? It's incredible. No, she doesn't toot her own horn much, but I'm surprised. She's kind of a low-key shark. Anyway, Sandy was hoping to call a quick all hands. Uh, Sal, we, uh, Sadie doesn't like being kept waiting. After you. He leads you to a room filled with suited, somber attorneys. You spot Aislinn and Gabe, but the rest of the faces you don't recognize. You take a spot near Aislinn. Can we have the guy from Bloodbound? The, the guy I used to voice like this. I wonder what uh, would be more important enough for a meeting like this. Good. Now you're all here. I have a few important announcements. First off, all the newly hired senior associates introduce yourselves. Turn over that information, multiple new senior associates, but Sadie's already nodding towards a, a woman at the back of the room. I'm Gigi Sinclair, did my degrees out of California, but I've been in the New York office of uh, Blaine Weston for the last five years. And I figure we all work hard, so when you uh, need someone to play hard, I'm your girl. Gigi grins impishly at everyone, the man next to her smirks, laughing in a Lashonic speech. <laughs> I'm Martin Vanderwell, Princeton Yale Federal Clerkship, and most recently an associate of Williams Fitcher Bernhardt. If you're looking for party companion, thanks for making my Billabies look that much better. Wow, that guy isn't playing around. What, because he said Yale and Harvard? Oh, piss off. Sadie nods to another man standing near you and Aislinn. Oh, this guy's first name is gonna give me woof. We're gonna call him Bao McGraw. But my bros call me Bao. I'm not gonna bear you with all the degree crap. We all know we're good, right? I okay, I like you! His last name's McGraw. I wonder. Oh, and if anyone wants to start an ultimate team for the office, hit me up. Friends widely finger gunning around the room, which you just lost points for. Sadie nods to you, and you stand up straighter, suddenly anxious. Oh, um, I'm Quinn Michaels. Uh, before this, I was working a much smaller firm in a much smaller town, and I um can't wait to work with all of you. I'm sure we'll be all old friends soon. Right, because that's why we took this job. We'll be friendly way faster if you join my ultimate team. I'll keep that in mind. By the way, I like the outfit. Clearly, I'm gonna have to up my fashion game if nothing else. Yes, I suppose fashion's one thing you'll certainly master it, Quinn. Not that it's the most important thing. Listen, you snippy little... Mmm! Last but not least, Aislinn. Most of you know her already, but for form's sake... Aislinn steps forward, raising her fingers in a tiny wave. Hi, I'm Aislinn Tanaga. I've been with McGraw-Byrne since law school, and I'm also a senior associate. 
Excellent. Before you ask, yes, Bao and I are related. He's my nephew, but he will succeed or fail on his own merits, just like every other member of this firm. He fixes the room with a gimlet stare and then turns to a man at her side. Moving on, all of us here at McGraw Byrne know and respect Lev Albinman. He's been a partner since the very beginning. I'm deeply sorry our new hires won't have the opportunity to work with him more closely because, Lev, I'll let you tell it. I've been, uh, it's, it's been a great honor to be part of this firm. I've, uh, just let the senior parties know that effective immediately, I'll be retiring. Murmurs fled around the room as he takes a seat. Gape shocked. Why is everybody shocked, seriously? It looks like this is the first anyone in this room is hearing about this. Fortunately, the entire senior partnership team have all agreed on his last act. The person who will replace Lev as senior partner is Gabe Rishi. I, uh, thank you so much. With a visible effort, he controls a shock, but within moments, he's smiling pleasantly. Gabe has pulled in dozens of big wins for the firm over the years. He's one of our greatest assets. Congratulations, Gabe. You've earned it. I can't tell you how flattered I am. I'll never fill Lev's shoes, but it's an honor to be asked to carry on his legacy. You lean in to whisper to Aislinn. Aislinn, is this... Actually a surprise? Wouldn't they have informed him about this before him? Maybe. Sadie loves her surprises, though. Plus, Gabe's a good actor, but I've never seen him at an actual loss for words before. Of course, Gabe's elevation raises another question. Oh, this is where we all compete for Gabe's position. Ha ha. Here we go. You notice how the room goes silent the moment she begins speaking. All the senior associates assembled here today were hired because of the best of the brightest in the fields. Damn straight. Gabe's promotion leaves a junior partnership open, which means one of these senior associates will be on a very fast track to partnership. All they need to do now is show me how much they want it. Aislinn's mouth actually drops open and Gigi grins widely. Legal Thunderdome? This firm is even better than everybody said. Wait, you mean we're competing against each other? <gasps> what? In this in this planet? On this? No, really, I'm shocked. That's precisely what I mean. And as the newest senior partner, Gabe will be overseeing overseeing the competition. And the other associates eye each other warily, tension crackling through the air. Glance over at Gabe just as his eyes turn towards you. Recognition dawns on his chiseled features as he seems to have come to the realization at the same moment you have. Gabe's not just the rising star of this place, he's the person who will decide my fate here. <laughs> You've joined New York's premier law firm and now you're competing for a partnership. Can you hold your own against the best of the best? Keep playing to find out. All right, before I get to my small little message here at the end of the video, thank you all for watching. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Head down description below, links to social media, Discord, and if you like to support me and my content. First of all, join our Discord. Seriously, it's very simple. You uh, get to come in there, chat with a bunch of people, share whatever you want. Basically, it's, it's kind of like a chat room, but permanent. It's also, you know... A great what next step up that's literally and figuratively my reason for making a discord was so people would have a next step up from just leaving comments in the comment section below which will you know typically be liked or replied to by me or others but it's just a more live and direct way of just well being a part of this community without further ado i'm going to go ahead and say the following so for a while now, you guys know I've been doing choices, and thank you all for watching. However, back when I announced that I was going to be doing all diamond choices, it was for the betterment of you. It wasn't for the betterment of me. I don't like doing them. It's more work than it really is, and long story short, it's just caca. A lot of these diamond choices, you have to go into diamond choices with people you just don't like. And yeah, so I'm going to stop picking so many.
Um, you know, here, when we I started this channel, um, and not just this channel, but also Choices, I meant to do content that was unique to this to this whole entire planet, let alone this platform. And so far, I've kept true to that. I'm the only person who reads the content. I'm the only person who does a lot of the things I do versus every other channel. Uh, not a dig at most of them, only one. But really, you know, I, I, I put a voice to things. And um, I've been shamed by that by one YouTuber as well as a group of four to five individuals, which that's fine. You can go, frankly, F yourself for all I give a shit, because I'm doing something that's unique, you don't like it, and you couldn't cut it if you tried it. But, the thing is, is I'm not going to be doing all diamonds all the time anymore. If you want all diamonds all the time anymore, go to the one of their channels, preferably the one that isn't the a-hole I called out. But otherwise, go to one of the other channels for all your diamond choices from now on. I will be p still picking some, ones that I'm comfortable with, ones that I want, but I just did it to help the community and so you guys wouldn't have to spend the money. And the community since then has just been like, well, if you're picking all the choices, then there's no point to being here and or I'll pick, I'll peep in whenever I want. And then also, yes, a lot of you have commented, especially you know, throughout the communities through Facebook, Twitter, as well as Reddit and said that, yeah, choices has been shit. A lot of you have stopped playing and whatnot. So I can't sit here and, and continue to be like, yo... Why aren't they coming to Choices content when you clearly are not digging the Choices content? So I am proud to announce a partnership with a uh, two apps that are in development right now. That as soon as they release early access, I will be the first and foremost YouTuber doing that content. Yes, that's right. That's what happens when you're you are someone who's a unique and original content creator. Other apps and companies reach out to you. And then other YouTubers get to sit there with their thumbs in their mouths and go, oh, okay. So, yeah, I'm just, this is me from now on. I, I've been playing this nice little just mm, person for a while now who's tried to be the kid-friendly PG Mr. Rogers. And I'm just done with it, especially this world. It's too vicious and just... Too many a-holes who think all this is a competition. Like I said, go to some of those other channels. I will be more than glad to list off a few down in the comment section below of YouTubers on YouTube that, de that you know, at least deserve viewage versus one or two that are just complete cutthroat assholes that backstab you in the back when asked for help and all this other shit and then want to defame you and everything else. I'm just not in the mood for it anymore, okay? And clearly you can tell this is a whole new side of me, a whole new tone of me, and if you've paid attention to my shorts as well as some of my feedback as well as some of my streams lately, you can tell I just don't have any more time for people's shit anymore. I don't. I don't. So, yeah, enjoy the voyage. Otherwise, if you're one of those weak, wet, paperback, skin people, jump ship now. Bye.